Welcome everybody who's in the room and remote. Thank you for attending our CF CARES event workshop. We know it's really warm in the room. We've asked for the air conditioning to be turned on. Since it's St. Patrick's weekend, we're gonna wish for good luck here. Um, thank you for bearing with us. Maybe we'll you know, be able to get out a little bit early. So um, there's water in the back of the room if you need it and please fan if you need it. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk today about CF CARES and uh, this is uh, being sponsored by the foundation and is launched nationally this year. The National Outreach Committee, which Mike Beatty explained in our previous session, um, is really spearheading the effort and helping to support the EDs at the chapters and the other staff at the chapters and the um, care centers in making these happen. So, so here is what you're gonna take away from today is that you will understand what a CF CARES event is about. You'll be able to support your local chapters and care centers with inviting people and supporting them at the event. And then um, you may be able to help us train for potential event responsibilities like hosts or table hosts. We have some handouts on the tables that explain some of the roles and we will uh, talk more about this as we go further into the presentation. Uh, my name is Lori Yoder. I'm the chair of this committee, which uh, is an honor to be a part of. Really enjoy this committee, and I come from Chicago. I'm part of the Illinois Greater Illinois chapter, um, and so I also work at a care center. So this gives me a unique vantage point with what we're doing with CF Cares. So a CF Cares event. Uh, is intended for conversation. So we're connecting people who care for those living with CF. Um, you may have noticed in the last couple of years, we've done a lot of great work with the foundation with engaging adults living with CF. This is kind of our next phase that's always been there, but we felt like we needed to strengthen it. Like how do we connect people who are siblings, partners, parents, grandparents, friends, that may not know somebody else in their situation. And all of us know um, what it's like to take care of somebody who has a chronic illness. It can be very isolating and overwhelming. You may have questions or concerns that you don't want to talk about in front of your loved one. How many in this room have taken care of somebody with a chronic illness? Yeah, so it's very common, right? Um, so this is a way for people taking care of those with CF um, to connect and get to know other people and find support. So I'm gonna give you just a, a few overview points and then we're gonna have our panel speak and I'm gonna introduce them in just a minute. So CF Care events are informal gatherings. Most of them have happened at a restaurant. We piloted this last year in six chapters. And so we piloted having an informal event at a restaurant where people would be invited um, who take care of somebody who has CF and could connect at the event. Um, there's no fundraising ask. Um, there's no pressure. It's come and meet other people. Um, so the six chapters that piloted it last year tried a variety of things and came up with some tips to help chapters going forward. We launched this nationally in 2018 in January, and so every chapter, every state, is gonna hold CF Cares events this year, and we ask that they have a minimum of two. Um, and so we did have a webinar call with the chapters um, early this year to help guide them in how to do it and encourage them to do it. And what they're gonna need is your support in getting this off the ground. So how do they work? Um, the chapters will, with the volunteer support, will come up with an invite and an event, so they'll need your help planning what restaurant, where, what locations would work. Um, your first one will be a little bit of like, let's try it somewhere where we know we have people who could easily attend. And then the chapter will contact the care centers in the area and then ask them to send out the invites through their patients. The invites will be clear that this is an invite for families, friends, partners, that this is a place for them to meet um, versus having people with CF there. This will be a place for the, the caregiving community to meet and it's free, no charge to the attendees. Um, and so 
really the feedback last year from the pilot programs was overwhelmingly positive. In the beginning, we were like, oh, will this work? Will we have, you know, will we need more structure? Will less structure work okay? What will we need? And it was really positive. People just really were happy to be together and no pressure and just enjoy uh, a dinner together. Um, and what we did find helped is to have some seasoned volunteers like all of you to be there helping support the conversation. And we always have a volunteer be the host because we want somebody who's a caregiver being the host. And that's what your handouts are, to give the host some guidelines in how to broach the event, um, set the tone, and then have volunteers sitting around the table, whether it's one large table or smaller tables, kind of guiding the conversation. There's some topic starters. Basically, the feedback we got from the pilot programs was that there wasn't, a lot of structure wasn't needed. Things just organically took place. Um, and it happened easily. And then we have surveys that go out to all of the attendees so that they can give some feedback about what they liked or didn't like. And overwhelmingly, the feedback was very positive. So we're super excited about 2018 because this is going national. And we can't wait to have all of you attend, host, volunteer to go, um, help your chapters do this. Because we think next year we're going to have great results to share. So with that, I'm going to introduce our panelists, um, and they're going to answer, they've all hosted or attended or supported events for CF Cares, and the panelists are going to describe to you their event, their role, um, why was this important, and what did they get out of it personally. And so here's our panel. So we have Charlene Chandler from the Delaware Valley, um, who's going to talk with you. Cheryl Kushner, who is a care center partner who has helped with care, the CF Cares, and Chris Landshut, um, who's an ED. So we have a variety of people who are going to give you their perspective. And um, after they speak, we have a short video from a uh, family member who attended. And then we're going to open it up for questions and answers. And we, would, and we all have remote questions as well. So uh, we'll be gathering questions from remote viewers. And then from any of you, we'll have a mic circulating around the room. So please jot down your questions. And they can be broad or they can be really specific because we want you to feel really good about having these events, supporting these events um, in the coming year. Uh, so with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl, who's going to go first and share her perspective on the event. Thank you. So I had, can you hear me in the back? I did, I could Hi, so I had initially gotten a phone call from Chris, who's our executive director locally, talking about the program and telling me that it was CF Cares and would I be interested and did I think I needed to be, you know, be a part of it. And to me, honestly, it was a no-brainer. Um, I am a nurse practitioner slash CF coordinator, and we have about 150 patients, and our, we have a separate adult and pediatric we have two separate clinics. So I have a lot of patient exposure, and I have a good relationship with my patients, and I do have the master email list, which kind of helps to facilitate getting the invitation out. So it, it was really something that's been so needed. So many parents and patients feel alienated. Um, they feel like they're doing it alone, and they do. And there's Facebook, and there's Instagram, and there's all the social. It's different than being in the same room. Um, the connections are different. I guess there's potential for some of the crazy stories that you see on Facebook that scare some patients and family members sometimes. But it was just natural. So we had agreed on a place and we had agreed on a date. Um, learning points in that. Yeah, when we called Cheryl first, I have to say that we have the most incredible relationship because of Cheryl with our care center. So when they asked, said to South Florida, would you like to pilot, I was like, Oh, we would love to. And so um, we, I got with Cheryl and we'd start talking about a host. We did this last October. It was October 19th. It was a Thursday night. I'll never forget it because it's now my favorite, the most, most, the most favorite event I've ever done. I've been with the foundation 32 years and I absolutely have never been so touched in my entire life. And so when Cheryl and I talked, we said, well, we need a host. 
who should we reach out to? And I said, well, let's call Bonnie, who's sitting in the back of the room, you all know, and um, to talk about a host. So we, first, Cheryl and I talked about maybe we could get Bonnie to talk to her son, Brian, to be the host. You know, he's a young CF father, and we thought it would be a perfect fit. So we called, right, we called Bonnie next? Bonnie, is that way? We called Bonnie and we talked to Bonnie and she said, let me talk to Brian. She said, I think he would be perfect. And then, of course, Cheryl and I said, well, we need table captains because I've never done anything like this. So I did not know how it would, how it would go. So, so we said, well, we have Brian will be our leader. And then with table captains would be Cheryl and Bonnie. So we had, you know, kind of scattered around the room. You had that idea. Yeah, actually the way the room was set up, we had it set up like a big L. So um, Bonnie was on the end, Brian was in the middle, and I was on the other end. So nobody would ever felt really by themselves. Because um, it's scary, it's intimidating. You have people that are coming from different points in their CF journey. You know, so we wanted but to make sure it was set up. In the role of the staff, for anyone in here for that would be st that are staff that would want to know, it was. I went with um, one of my, co my colleagues, Ali DeSeno, who we love. And so the two of us as staff, we went, but it was not. And I made it very clear at the beginning that this was their meeting. And so Ali and I stayed in the back of the room. We didn't even join the table. We just set everything up and then we kind of disappeared. And um, during the break, because we, you know, we had a buffet and we took a break, which go, you'll go into that, what happens after that. But when we did the break, because they did their introductions in the first half, I, I ran to Cheryl and I said, I feel so bad. I said, everyone's talking about great strides and they're talking about their events and, you know, this isn't about that. And Cheryl said, Chris, it's okay because that's how they got started. That's their involvement and it's their way of, you know, introducing themselves. I said, okay, because it's not about recruiting for great strides or it was the, their night, not the, foundation, not the staff of the foundation. So. And Chris had also made the point, like right in the beginning, this is about you, this is not fundraising, we just want a way for you, everybody to network. And honestly, the night just flowed. Um, I think it was either Bonnie or Brian who had started, Brian had started, started initial initially, and he had done his introduction, and we kind of went around the room. Um, and it just flowed. And I know my parents pretty well, and I know you know my family, the close family members. I think I know them pretty well, and to see like a couple of the dads, and it was just he did a lot of talking, and I'm like, he needed that, yeah. you know. It was truly a release in an environment where people really got it, and it wasn't the friend that shows up or donates to Great Strides, and you think they get it, they don't. They don't live that life, but that dad sitting at the you know at the other end of the L, they get that. And the connections that were made, the friendships. Parents have been to lunch together now. They're friends. They're calling. Um, actually, it was funny. They were both um, two of the dads. They were in the clinic at the same time with their children. And the one dad heard the other dad, but the door was closed. <laughs> so they, it just so happened they went to lunch the next day. And he was like, I knew you were there. I heard your voice. <laughs> but I couldn't say, and I wasn't going to open the door. But these are like now ongoing relationships with people who really get it. So, I mean, it was a no-brainer. It was easy. It's going to be twice a year, if not more, and we could talk about the if not more a little bit towards the end. And I have to interrupt because I just heard from our friend in the back of the room, Bonnie, I just got a text. So I'm going to have you stand in a second. So. Uh, to remind everyone that it is a private room. It is. It was. It was. Yeah. We had 18 people in the room that evening, and um, you know it was interesting because the first before we broke for dinner, we had we had some wine out and we had appetizers, and they just when Brian introduced everyone, I mean asked everyone to introduce themselves. I'd say the first hour and a half it was introductions and. What, Bonnie, what, but 30 minutes into it, someone said, Do you, does anyone have tissues? I mean, it was just so beautiful, what people really, you know, talking and opening up and doing their introductions. And then we, 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 they went and got their dinners, they came back, and then they really talked about, it was Brian that basically said, what do you guys want to talk about tonight? You know, what, what's happening in your lives? And um, I tell you, I, I, I thought I knew these families. I knew some of these families for 20, 25 years. And I realized I did not know these families. And I learned so much about them and I felt closer. And when I left that night, I said, I wanna work harder. I thought, I think I'm a hard worker. I mean, I, 
I think we work real hard, all the staff in the offices, but I said, I want to go work harder because I've learned more about you tonight and I can't wait to do this again. And, and it was interesting because Cheryl was quiet. I don't think you spoke until the end of the evening and it was one of the family members said, you know, Cheryl, we love you and, and you've been a part of our family for so long. What do you think about this subject? And then Cheryl, you jumped in. Right, and it was just like, it was that night wasn't about me, and I never thought that they would ask for like my opinion. It was like, maybe on new therapies and what I thought, and the CF community, and you know they kind of blew me away. Just wanting to, it wasn't about me. That night was totally meant to be for the families, but I guess they did include because I did my introduction, even though they knew there was one family that did it that was not from our care center. They came up, but everybody else knew who I was. So my introduction, I thought was brief the way it should be and the second time around the table they stopped and they got me you know I mean I think they realize that it's a journey and we all take a part in that village um, but everybody left that night just so um, wanting to do it again how could they do it again the networking it started with emails because that was part of you know I guess the questionnaire at the end and it was a positive experience, honestly, for everybody. So yes, tissues are important. I think that maybe too many is too many, but just maybe have them sporadically placed so that they're safe. Um, for scheduling, we learned, check your local events, because there was a Tim McGraw concert that night. So I definitely had a few families who said that they had concert tickets. So it's never going to be perfect for everybody. There is life, and there's things that are happening. But, you know, families that may have needed it, and some of them really would have benefited, they'll come to the next one because they've asked, you know. And now that I've lived through it, we have a, um, this one mom, she has two sons in their 20s. And I thought she would be a good person, and she's come to other fundraising things that I've done for Great Strides. And when I personally invited her, she's like, I don't know if I could do it. When my boys were toddlers, I went to a support group. And it was like the Mean Girls Club. And I left crying, and I just don't know if I'm ready. So I had to live through one now, that, and I saw her this week, and I'm like, you could do this. This is just positive, and it's networking. And the only thing before, you probably, I'm going to turn fine. over. The only thing I want to say at the end, we did, everyone, all 18 um, participants did fill out their survey. And I learned a lot from the survey. And I had driven down with the CF grandmother because she, we, you know, it's, she was in like the Fort Lauderdale and this was in North Miami. She said, can I drive with you? And I said, sure. And honestly, we could have stayed till midnight. I think we finally had to say, we have to go home. And so we were driving and we were walking out with her and I was, we were dri walking to the car. I think it was Bonnie and Cheryl and I, and she said, can I tell you guys something? She said, I think every single person that left were happier than when they walked in this room. She said, we needed this. You know, we never have this. We're never together because I think it was one of our dads that said, we're not supposed to be together. So for you guys to do this, I think they were touched. I think they, they said, please do more. Um, I, I, think they, I think they saw a different side of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Thanks, Chris and Cheryl. Yeah. So our event was a little bit different. Um, we have a few different care centers to choose from. So we started with one, and we ended up with about, I'd say about 10 or so uh, individuals there. Um, combination of new parents, uh, of parents of children that with CF that are getting ready to go to college, uh, grandparents and siblings. And our group actually didn't need tissues. Um, everyone kind of fed off one another because everyone was coming from a different place and really looking to learn. Um, I think the most important thing about this event is acknowledgement. We all need to be acknowledged. And a lot of times when we're taking care of others, we completely forget about ourselves. As a sibling, I'm a CF sister and a CF cousin. Um, as a child, I was resentful. You know, I, I had two siblings that were sick, only one was CF, but you know, when my brother was getting all the attention all the time, I really didn't like him. And it was really nice for me to be able to talk to others and say, hey, you know what, it's okay to feel that way. And you're allowed to feel that way. Um, you don't always have that when you're secluded from others. Um, you know, I, uh, I grew up in hospitals because of my siblings being sick. And I'm an extreme extrovert, which really scared my mom. So, you know, <laughs> we, uh, the time frame for my brother was in the early 80s. And at St. Chris's Hospital in Philly, it was the third floor. The third floor housed 
all of the CF patients, and there were four to a room. So there was just passing of all kinds of bacteria and illnesses there. What I would do when my brother was there is I would go up to the fourth floor to the playroom. And there was this wonderful woman named Marilyn there. And Marilyn used to make me feel special. And so when I was at the hospital, I had my special time. And that was my acknowledgement. So for siblings that are out there that don't have CF, we really need to focus on siblings from that perspective for me. But everyone involved, it's, it's very different for each one of us. But we need to be able to be in a safe place in an environment with others that understand and can acknowledge us. This event is amazing. Um, you know, we had, uh, you know, new parents that brought their toddler, you know, with them. And she kind of became a little bit of a focal point, of course, you know, passed around with everyone. But from the beginning, to see those parents that don't have a lot of involvement with the foundation, um, to have them initially be very timid and quiet, and by the end of the evening, which was about three hours as well, to see them open up and really exchange phone numbers, gain information, um, it was really amazing. I really encourage everyone, you know, if you have the opportunity to go to one of these events, um, to be part of it, it it's going to help be the rock that hits the water where the ripple goes where you have no idea who it touched. That's pretty much how I can sum up this event. Thank you. Um, Thanks, everybody. That was amazing. And I did not pay them to go on and on about how great it was. These are their personal experiences. And as you can see, the pilot phase, this is the feedback we kept getting. And so that's why we're excited to launch this year. I'm going to share one video from a participant from uh, the South Florida chapter. Hello. My name is John, and I'm the father of an amazing 18-year-old daughter who has been battling cystic fibrosis for many years. I recently had an opportunity to attend the CFF CARES program in South Florida. I believe it was the first event of its type in the area. Prior to this event, I never really had an opportunity to discuss my family's journey with this terrible disease with any other individuals who were going through the same thing. So often we feel like we're totally alone dealing with this disease, that there's no one else out there who is getting up early in the morning to hook up an IV staying up late at night to do CPT so that your child can stay out a little later with their friends, or waking up in the middle of the night to assist your child when they are struggling just to take a breath of air. The CFF CARES program event demonstrated to my wife and I that there are others out there who are dealing with the same challenges that we are. There were parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and friends who all took part in the event, sharing their stories, asking questions, crying, and just spending time with others who understand. I met many wonderful people there and have developed ongoing friendships with some of them. As a parent, there's not much worse that can happen to you than to watch your child suffer. The CFF CARES program was a wonderful event that allowed our South Florida CF community to come together and provide hope for the future. I would highly recommend this program to anyone who has a loved one with this devastating disease. Thanks again for putting on this wonderful event. Okay, so now we're going to open it up to a group discussion, and I'm going to uh, walk around with a microphone um, because we would really like your ideas and your questions. Uh, this is a beginning, so if you have ideas, we want to hear ideas. We've had some chapters want to pilot specific things, like have one for spouses or partners or one for grandparents. We've had some ideas floating around, and so we'd love to hear from you. Um, and so please, uh, share your questions. Jen has five. I have five questions. She has five. I have five questions. Oh well, do you want them all at once? Do you well, want them one. Them? No, one. And one. they're granular. Okay, so I'm going to go in order. Um, do we look to limit the number of attendees? Would you suggest that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I thought 18 to 20 was perfect. I mean, how do you feel? 18 to 20 is ideal. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, and... Oh, and, and to answer this question, yeah. uh, it kind of depends on your restaurant space. So we've had some chapters have more than 20. We've had some have less. But what you can do is if more people want to sign up, want to RSVP, you can tell them you'll put them on the list for the next one. Because okay. this could happen, okay? So you don't want to say to people, like, sorry, too late. You just right. include them in the next one. 
Two quick granular questions and then a bigger one. Um, do you, is there a formal establishment of ways for them to post connect? So uh, a way to you know, give them each other's emails or setting up a network or something like that? We asked them, I don't know, we asked them if they would, sh if it was okay to okay. share their emails. And the next day I just did a, um, uh, an email to everyone. Okay, and then. Uh, Wait, Charlene, okay. what about yours? Yeah. We did the same. same. So, so our ED sent out an email to all, all attendees and asked if it was okay to share. And they all said yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Same. Do we provide CF collateral materials at all? We did. We, we did? We a okay. table. Yes. And the bigger one, um, you mentioned how to, um, let's be really candid about this. Let's be nice about this. So the crazy or the or the support group. I, I, I mm -hmm. did speak to, I have a family who mentioned to me that their first interaction um, when their daughter was, you know, was diagnosed was they went to a support group and they'll never go back. Mm -hmm. um, so as a staffer or as the, you know, the host, how do you facilitate that crazy or do you, do you intercede? Do you try to Cheryl, I'd like Absolutely. Cheryl to address this Great. question. Absolutely, her answer. See what happens? No, no. anyway, Sorry. you know, I think this, so you're talking somebody went well, if, and. If the group is going in a direction right. that you just don't think it's really the direction they should be going. Well, but, I want to, let me say something first and then Cheryl can answer specifically. We were very concerned about that with the pilot programs and it actually didn't really happen. No. Okay. We were, a, a lot of people were really concerned like what if somebody's bringing up, you know, tragic things or taking over the conversation. It really did not happen and we had six chapters do this, eight pilot events. So it seemed like organically it, was, it kind of took care of itself. Um, and then that's why we have some seasoned volunteers there to help redirect. But Cheryl, answer from your perspective what you thought. I'm just going to oh, chime in on that first too. So I lost my brother 12 years ago to CF. And sometimes there's an aspect of me where I don't, I don't want to tell someone that. I don't, I don't want to. But in this environment, it, it's, not, it's, it's not posed that way at all. Um, it's not presented that way. It really, you know, a lot of times if you're sitting, our table was, was long wise. So I could be talking this way, individual here, and then turning around and chiming. And that's kind of how our setup went. So if a conversation started to kind of veer in a different way, I, you can cut it off and show that you're uncomfortable. Individually. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Cheryl, you want to add anything? I think that that's probably the advantage of having somebody there who may know the families, be it somebody from the care center, so it's not the stranger trying to redirect, and I think if you know that person, it may be easier and not taken as harshly, you know, it's, you know, or you can maybe just change the angle a little bit, but I think if somebody else tries to redirect, it may sound a little bit harsher than maybe somebody who knows them. That's a good point. Do we have any remote questions, Cheryl? Um, I don't have, actually something did come up about just having the CF patients in the same environment and to try if you, you know, to discourage the families from bringing the patients to the event so that you don't have run into potentially having two patients in that enclosed environment. So again, it's for the families, it's not for the patient and the patient, hopefully the parents can get a babysitter. Yeah, really what this is about is that people have a, a free space to, a comfortable space to talk openly because we're all careful about our loved ones, right? We're not going to talk about certain things, you know, in front of our loved ones with CF. So really it needs to be um, the caregivers at this um, session. Okay, I'm going to uh, let her ask one question and I'll run back. This is just purely logistical, but I just wondered it sounds like you had more of an informal um, event, maybe, and do you, do you have to have the people go around and speak, or is that just totally up to each? That was our um, agenda. That was, yeah, the that was events Cheryl were really similar. Agenda. The events were similar. I think she was just talking about how the tone, the tone was different and the layout, right? Okay. Okay, I'll be back. Who had the question? Two questions. Um, as the social worker in your care center, you're probably one of the busier uh, people in your care center. 
Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I was a little bit late. Is that who we would? Is that who you would recommend reaching out to? Is who in the care center would help coordinate this? Good question. I think probably either. Um, I know when this program started, I was that person. A, we were going through some staff transition at the time. Um, but I'm also the person who reaches out to them for great strides. So they're used to hearing me like rah rah something in regards to CF. So it was perfect timing, great strides was behind us. And you know, I think the social worker gets into it and I don't know, I think depending on the relationship, I think either would be fine. It's just who knows the, pay, the family's best. So I think chapters don't always know this, right, Cheryl? And I think an easy thing to do is go to uh, ask who the clinic coordinator is. So every center has a clinic coordinator. Um, that might mean? be a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. it might be an RT, it might be a social worker. Or if you have a strong relationship with somebody already, just go to them. It doesn't have to be a certain person necessarily unless you don't know who it is. I think, what do you think, Cheryl, the clinic coordinator might That's be a good place to start? Exactly, and, and they'll know their team and they'll know the right person to redirect if it's not them themselves. Right. So, and, and thank you. We have a wonderful relationship with our care center. I just know that um, we put so much pressure on them around great strides time. We're trying to share the wealth, so to speak. Um, my second question is, is logistically, who pays for this? That was actually so a, oh, sorry, oh, go Lori. Yeah, you're given a budget. So every, this was a part of the webinar that Molly Riley had with the EDs in uh, February. So you're given a budget for the year. And I don't know how much it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> but reach out to Molly Riley if you have questions about the exact budget. But there is a budget uh, for two, a minimum of two events a year. No, it's not at a home, it's at a restaurant. So the chapter is uh, getting a private room at a restaurant um, for it to be held. And you have a budget for that. So it's not held in private homes. So the, so, so the table host is a volunteer who comes and helps set the tone and, and welcomes people. Sure. Is it okay for the chapter to start off the pilot group with people that they cherry pick or would you suggest that come through the care center? Uh, the invites need to go to everybody and anybody through the care center, but you will cherry pick some seasoned volunteers to support the event. And I'm going to have Bonnie talk to you about her, her role as one of the seasoned volunteers that was picked. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to answer your question of just about was, but yeah, the host family or the host person is just somebody that you think has the ability to make everyone feel comfortable. You know, just come on in. This is who I am. This is my story. Once they open up first, then a lot of people open up. For the most part, um, a lot of the people in the room knew who each other was, didn't necessarily know each other well. Um, I got to tell you, if, if all the things we have done, as Chris said, it was the most amazing evening. It was a work night. So we were concerned that, okay, we have to be done by 8 o'clock. Um, we have a very large um, amount of territory that our office spans. So um, it's actually three counties. So we were concerned about people getting home at 10.30-ish. I got in my car at 10.30. Right? We were saying to everybody, okay, we really need to go. Um, and I think we started like at six. It was, it was just amazing raw emotion. And the tears were not tears of sorrow, they were tears of joy. And I think what hit me the most was the one family who started the Kleenex thing when they said, we have a child who's 18 years old and we have never had the opportunity to cry with people who understood why we were crying. So it just, it was a beautiful evening. So don't let the tears make you think anything else. And again, there was no crazy. And I think for us, the natural thing was Cheryl at that care center, because Cheryl truly is the center of that care center. 
Everyone knows her. Everyone loves her. She's at events. She's at meetings. Um, she is a true partner with the cystic fibrosis community. So, yeah, thank you. Um, any remote questions, Cheryl? Oh, yeah, you, you just need to stand up to the podium, Cheryl. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We have plenty of time. We're going to get to all your questions. So I'm going to go with one of the easier ones, at least easier for me. What if you have two centers within a 10-mile radius? Should there be two different events? And, the re and honestly, it depends. 10 miles isn't that far. Um, you could take that money and have extra events throughout the year. You have to know your community. You have to see if you want to, I think, break it into more specialty. You know, do you want to do one for grandparents or for spouses? You know, you know your people. Take that opportunity and make it the best and the broadest that you can. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, Charlene, I think there were people over by you. Here, take a next one. Oh, here's one right here. Yeah, you had mentioned that um, you had it in a restaurant, you had uh, appetizers, wine, and then a buffet meal, and that there's a budget. Was there an issue with the foundation paying for the wine? I just wanted to... It was donated wine. So oh, donated wine, and yeah. the restaurant lets you bring in donated wine? Oh, that's unusual. I had a contact, so it kind of made that a little easier, and then it helped on the budget. Well, usually the restaurants... Won't right. let you bring in. Or they may like work with beverage. you, or some of them will have like a corking fee, which may be yeah. cheaper than bringing yeah. in the wine. Yeah. So it it just depends. Okay, no problem. Don't waste time. Oh, you didn't have. Oh, I have to turn this off for a second. Yeah, the feedback. Okay. Uh, I am a CF mom, so I do not work for the foundation. I just help. And uh, I have an 11 year old. And we've actually been doing, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. And we've been doing this. This is our third year to do this. Not been paid, uh, not from the foundation. It was through somewhere else. And uh, now it's switched to CF Cares. We used to call it CF Connect. And we've done dinners, like you're talking about with the apps and the wine and things. And then we, we do a lunch also. So it just also just depends on where you're located and where your families are. I mean, you know them. Uh, we go. We used to go into my foundation all the time. I mean, they were 10 minutes away, and we loved all those people that worked there, and we were in there all the time. So um, you just kind of, you know your families and where they are and who's going to come. And um, so we've tried. We kind of rotate between two locations. Uh, especially when we do the lunches, we kind of know the areas that they're closer, and we have about 15 max, and um, it's been really good. Uh, I mean, there's just, being a mom, it's just so helpful to have that connection because that's what you want. You know, they're going through the same thing you are. My parents come, um, and it's just been good to, like, there was another grandmother there who has a child, a grandchild that's about my daughter's age, and um, they, she said she's having problems with the school nurse. So I said, this was a while back. And I said, well, they've passed the law where, you know, you're, you can, she can take her own pills now. Uh, you don't have to go to the nurse. So, and then there was a grandma, oh, this is the last thing, uh, a grandmother who has a, or a mom, I'm sorry, a mom who has a 30 year old and, um, with CF and she had a surrogate and the best friend of the surrogate was in the same room. You know, it was just so weird, you know, and, um, but it, it's just been really awesome. And I'm so thankful that the foundation is doing this now. So, um, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, I'm curious. Thanks for sharing that story. Has anybody else been a part of attending or hosting at an event? Wonderful. After we get through some of the questions, we'd love to hear from some of you as well. I know I have people that have been look, staring me down over here. I think you have been waiting a long time. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm Janet Weiner. I'm a CF mom, two kids, adults with CF. Um, and just a couple points, just by way of feedback. Um, this is the gift of the foundation to the community. And in my view, it's very long overdue. I think 
us in particular, we've always felt like every time we reached out for help and support, we've been met with, please don't fundraise. And, you know, we're both kind of overachievers, and the, representative, the family representatives that you get that come to this and other events, are, the, we are not representative of the CF community generally. And if you think you know us, you really don't. Even your care center directors and, uh, you know, the nurses, nurse practitioners are probably the closest, okay? That's the only one I've cried with, okay? I've never met my social worker, okay? But maybe they don't think I need support, okay? But you don't know us. Everybody needs support. Right. That's my point. That's but true. there's large segments of this population that we are not reaching. They are not going to come to an event. They may not have the money. So it's critical that it be paid for. Um, Which it is. Um, I wouldn't make it on a work night. I was surprised to hear that. People work. I work. I would do it on a weekend. I wouldn't do it on a work night. That would be my, my feedback. Um, don't rely on the same families. We're exhausted. I, I think somebody else needs, it, would, it, just, it would be nice to have the support come from someone else. So, I mean, I think it's fair enough to ask us to be at a table and answer questions, but, you know, it, this is your gift to us. That would be my feedback. Um, have something for everybody to do when they're there. I just went and did something with my girlfriends. We did painting and sipping wine or something. That was like really relaxing and fun and natural conversation. I think having this dramatic crying thing, that would be like not something I want. As me, and and I try not to do that with newly diagnosed parents because I don't think they need to hear that. I remember when we went to our first uh, care support type thing, and I had moms there telling me, "You need to quit your job." And I'm like, "Well, honey, that's not happening. My job is where we get our insurance, and I like my job. Exactly. Went to school for 26 years for my job, so." Um, that's it. There are families who are really struggling, who don't have the money to make donations, who can't manage to get their meds reordered, uh, who can't manage, who don't have the organizational skills to host events. We need to help them. That's my point. Thank you. Right. So thank you for all your points. Um, so uh, they're all very valid and good suggestions. Um, I do want to make a clarification, because I, I realize in our presentation we sounded like we're asking the same people. So really the the to get the first one off the ground, we've been encouraging chapters to invite volunteers they know. But as we move forward with this, the goal is to include everybody and to ask people who don't always get asked to host or come volunteer and to also get people to attend who have never attended anything. So very good points and I'm glad you brought that up because we haven't really made that clear here. So right now, uh, we know a lot of people are gonna be having their first one, but for those that have been having them for a while, um, I think are probably more successful at getting people drawn in who have not been drawn in in the past. So good points, and but valid. Just, just to chime in on that as well, uh, for our event, there was only one couple that I had ever met, and I'm very involved in the foundation. I go to a lot of different events, so it was really nice to have individuals that really haven't done a lot with the foundation or are new and don't know. So I, I don't, you never know who you're gonna get. And that's why I'm saying, right. be that rock that's thrown in the water, that the ripple goes out and see what comes back. You may not know who it touches or who it hits, just, just putting it out there. I'm up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was one of those moms uh, 29 years ago that participated in a support group and it was, we brought our kids, that's what we did. Um, they were mostly young children. So I'm, an, I, I'm a mom of an adult, he's almost 30. And he's married now, so um, I would love to be involved in this just because his wife doesn't really have anybody to talk to other than me, and maybe that's not the best person to talk to. <laughs> so um, I thought of one thing that might be really helpful is to have a Facebook group for the people that come so that they can stay connected, because a lot of people really don't like to mess with email anymore, and they miss it. So um, I thought that would be um, a good suggestion. And, I live in Farmington, Missouri, which is about an hour and a half south of St. Louis, and my, I have two other children, and they live in Springfield, and there's, which is about almost four hours away. So the St. Louis Gateway Chapter, they support the whole, Saint, the whole Missouri. And so how can they do that, or can I help them do that? I mean, obviously, they're only going to pay for two, but... You know, how, how can we reach these people that even from Farmington, I'm, you know, on a, 
it's just sometimes hard to spend three hours in the car and then three or four hours in an event. So, especially if they've been drinking, you know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, yeah, that's true. And then, but, you know, it's not that personal touch, like they said. And then Christy, you know, our, our director, you know, when we have alcohol um, at an event, like a happy hour or something, everybody buys their own. Mm-hmm. And so they don't provide alcohol, even if it's free, and have people go out and drive from a liability standpoint. So I'm not, I mean, it does, we don't have to have alcohol at the events. So, but how can we touch those different areas? That, like from Springfield, it's four hours away. That's just so, way too far. Yeah, so I think Chris is going to say something. But before she does, I'm going to just say, this is our first year. And wouldn't it be great if like a year from now, the foundation was giving us more funds? And I might get in trouble <laughs> for saying this. But that you showed that like two events went so well, but that you had so many people waiting to go to events and you didn't have enough money or time to do more. I just think like we're launching it and whatever feedback we get would be so helpful about geography and number of events and how this works for chapter staff because they have a lot on their plates. So like just figuring it out, right? You know, even even if we couldn't, we could like kind of have like a little bunny trail off of the, the what the CF cares but even if you had like a, a potluck you know had somebody's that home that was insane. that was you know had a big home and everybody sure. bring a dish and you know very yeah. informal and, yeah, and very interesting idea. just getting together and obviously I think that's a very important thing don't don't bring any CF people because sometimes people have to have a safe place to vent they that need. they would never want to say to their right. spouse or right. their sibling or whatever Thank you so much. Chris, what do you Lori, have to say? I called Molly because I had the same question. Now they want more to do. We have three care centers, so you know, they wanted, we could do eight, ten of these. And so we said, what do we do? And Molly said, well, why don't you go have pizza? Maybe you have coffee, potluck. So I can, that half of your question, we thought of that, so that they don't have to wait a year in one of the territories. Exactly. We're going to do a remote question, and then we'll get to the audience. So um, how can you leverage care center advisory boards and the events they do throughout the year to bring families together? I don't know if I understand that. So I, I guess there, you know, the, the centers, there are centers that have the care center advisory boards, and amongst those boards, they have events. So I guess their question is, how can you leverage these boards and the events they do throughout the year to help bring families together? And in addition to this, I guess? Yeah, it's probably just joining them together, you know? Okay, oh, oh. so explain oh, yeah. the perfect timing with the mic. I was too embarrassed to stand up and ask. <laughs> so, um, well, so I'm a member of the, my family advisory board, and we do a lot of these events throughout the year, mostly um, just with the same regular group of families who are usually very active with the board. And they are incredibly helpful. But I love the idea of, of like bringing in the chapter people because this is all care center uh, you know, folks. And I think we're a little siloed. So I'm wondering how can we work together and bring you know, the family advisory board events in with the care events. Can't hear. I wonder if a place to start would be uh, for the chapter staff to reach out to the advisory board to plan the events and collaborate on, on like not duplicating maybe, but adding to and maybe getting their ideas about how to get new families or new people to the events. Like would it work maybe with initially collaborating perhaps? I don't know. You have- yeah, I was going to say, um, Nationwide Children's, we have CF education events for uh, patients or parents and families. I mean, patients are remotely included and then have sort of a social opportunity at that point as well. Um, so that might be something to collaborate um, with an education night. I was just going to say, how do we set this up so that it, it's not um, assumed that it's a support group but more of a networking group? Because I wouldn't use the word crazy. I mean, uh, you know, just an appreciation for mental health issues that folks have and depression and, and all of that stuff. So it will come. Um, you know, the more, the more events that you have, I mean, or if it's the same group of folks getting together, I mean, it will evolve into that. So how are you going to handle mental health issues and be able to set expectations around boundaries and we're sharing our own stories or even if it goes negative about a care center or 
a chapter staff member or a physician. And that may happen. You know, it will happen to yeah. set boundaries. The other thing, too, is a, is a care center staff member, I would be very cautious um, and, and look at your confidentiality agreements and also around mental health um, because things that you discover there about patients um, or families and boundaries are, are crossed all the time and especially with the depression screening now, I know that our care center, um, I mean, they won't screen adults for depression because they're not the patients. Um, the parents? You the mean? parents, yeah. Now we're starting to screen and we're creating right. a referral pool for them as well. Exactly. So, but to make sure that that's set up for, you know, for, for those groups. Yeah, as we well. have that. We have that actually at our center. But again, the CF care program that I may go to, you're right. I mean, I did. I have family that came from another center, so I don't have access to that family. You know, so there is a cross of a boundary, and you're right. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you're bringing up a really good question. There are some of us care center partners who do a lot of volunteering. And what I always say to patients is, I'm a volunteer right now. Do not expect me to be your social worker. Um, and if you have something you want to talk to me about as your care center partner, you can bring it up there. And so I think Cheryl's similar to me. Like, we do a lot of other things. We're captains of teams. We're on boards, whatever. So you're bringing up a good point. I think... Uh, we do need to think about that, but I certainly don't talk about things I hear at, when I'm cycling with my patients back at the hospital. So um, it's a good point. Your first point before that was about, I'm forgetting, before the mental health, oh, how to deal with things that might come up as groups get together. This will, oh, yes, so there's an invite. There's an invite that goes out from the ED of the chapter, and the EDs that have been involved in the pilot programs are more than happy to share their invites with EDs who have not done it yet. The ED uh, invites, have we've worked through them through the pilot program, where they really were about, this is a, a social gathering, uh, this is free to you, this is informal. It, it comes across very uh, much not like a support group. And then the table captain, You've got some uh, points on your handout. Really, it's about setting the tone at the beginning. And then they've organically kind of managed themselves. I know what you're bringing up. We had this concern in the pilot program. And I mean, I deal with small groups all the time. Uh-huh. Right. Yes, 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 I agree. And that's why we're having seasoned volunteers there to handle these things and figure out where to redirect. Okay, we have time for two more questions, and then we're going to need to wrap up because I respect your time. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to recommend for chapter staff that you speak to the care center director to determine who they would like you to work with on their staff. And so in that case, they can also let you know about this woman's suggestion if there is a family ed day or a patient advisory council, how they envision, because as I understand this, it's really supposed to be driven through the centers. So it just would seem to me that the care center director could, So it's I mean, not... I know we support it, but we're supposed to be working hand in hand. Well, the center's not really driving this. This is really driven from the foundation. The centers are passing out the invites and including people, but the center is not the one right. driving the process as far as host, holding the event and running it. I understand that, but mm -hmm. if you're using the center to send out the invitations, wouldn't you want your, I don't know, my care center directors would be upset if oh, I okay. went directly to their one-month-old social worker or... Yeah, I think it varies. And so that could be yeah. just my situation. And I guess yeah. the other question mm -hmm. I had, um, did you do any pilots that involved the Spanish-speaking community at all? So, so th did this come up in yours? Yeah. So let me answer her first question. So I think care centers vary a lot. So my care center, the director, would love to not be addressed about this. So I think it's a bit of a guessing game, but that's why I brought up oh, clinic no. coordinators. So I think center directors may want to be asked about this, they may not. It varies by center. So and they wouldn't even want to know. So if you, if you don't know, go directly to the care center director or the clinic coordinator is what I would suggest. Yeah. Um, but I think it varies, and I think some chapters do know who to contact, and it's okay if they don't go to the director. Like at my center, it's fine that they come to me. So I think if you do know somebody else to go to, it's okay. Uh, and then the next question, the last one we're going to end with, 
uh, before we wrap up is about Spanish speaking events. And we, we're now working with the um, University of Miami. So the first thing the social worker said, I would, we can't wait to do this. And can we do two? One in English and one in Spanish. So we are absolutely, um, absolutely working on that, yes. And all the materials are in Spanish now. Yeah, so yeah, we have to in Miami. Um, but Cheryl, I know with the Spanish, we had even at ours, you know, we had the one, one family. Yeah. Okay, I know we're, we're out of time. We're, we're going to wrap up, and here's what I'll ask you to do. I know that there's a lot of questions. We're going to stay up here. If you want to come and talk to us, please do. In addition, you can reach out to Molly Riley, and she will also help the outreach committee reach out to you to support you with these things. What we really need you to do is to just talk it over with your, whether you, you're a volunteer or you're with a, a chapter. We really do want collaboration, and so far this has been very positive, and as other people brought up, we will have things that will come up this year, and isn't that wonderful? Like, we'll have things to work on, and we'll have things to improve upon, and maybe this will grow. That would be our hope. So thank you for attending, and thank you for supporting these events.